All right, all right, Red Nation. Today I'm gonna to be talking about displays, displays for medical imaging. If you haven't seen our video on how displays work, definitely check that one out. Today we're gonna to be talking about how we wanna do quality assurance for displays. A lot of the material that I'm gonna pull from today is actually from an AAPM task group 270 that was led by these two gentlemen here. This is Nick Bevins and Michael Flynn, both at Henry Ford Hospital when they did this work as co-chairs along with several other really great members of the task group. I'm gonna help summarize it here. Not all the nitty gritty details, but just some of the important points of what you wanna be concerned with for your monitors. First off, there's different types of monitors, right? Diagnostic monitors, first and foremost, are number one, most important to have really high quality monitors for the purpose of doing the diagnostic reads. For the monitors that are on your CT or on your x-ray systems themselves, the quality there can be a little bit lower, as well as the displays that, for instance, in the ER, they're going to be reading off of. Those are being referred to here as clinical specialist displays. And additionally, displays are used for the electronic health records. We wanna make sure are working properly but don't need the same level of quality as those diagnostic displays. This is a breakdown of the quality parameters that are really important for the different types of displays. And you say, what is L0, what is L max? I'm gonna define all those things as we go along here, but just first off at a high level, mammography is the one that needs the highest luminance. You're looking for both low contrast and high contrast, high resolution details within these images. Mammography has kind of the highest level of requirement. And then down from that, you have the diagnostic monitors for non-mammography tasks. And then down from that, all three of those other categories, they have kind of lumped together as one set of requirements for those that are gonna be used on the modalities, or gonna be used in the ER or for EHR. Let's talk about these details so we can understand what this table means and we're gonna come back to it. First off, what really matters actually has to do with the monitor properties as well as the lighting scenario in the room. It's those two things together that contribute to how you actually see the image. Because if your eye is looking here at the monitor, your eye is both gonna see the light coming from the monitor itself, as well as light that's reflecting off of the monitor and coming towards your eye. The worst case is if you have what we call spectral reflection, where you have a nice focused light source, it's pointed towards the monitor and then it points towards your eye. In this scenario, you're gonna actually be able to see that glare, that light on the monitor itself. So this is just unaccessible. We can't calibrate this out or do anything. We need to actually fix that by changing this light source and potentially the properties of the monitor itself. You don't want glossy panels, a glossy panel that's going to reflect that light directly. You also don't want direct lighting sources. You'd like to have some nice diffuse light. Diffuse reflection is actually something we can't avoid because we do want to have some level of light in the room. And so if there is a little bit of light in the room, that light, as it hits off of the monitor and comes back towards your eye, it's actually going to lead to a background of, but the nice thing about this in comparison with spectral reflection is that it's just an overall haze of background. So there's not going to be a light image like you could see with an actual spectral reflection. So we give this parameter a name. Luminance is how much light is coming out in one given area. And we talk about the luminance from the monitor itself. And then we also talk about the luminance that we call ambient luminance. So this L ambient is the ambient luminance from diffuse reflection off of the monitor. We can break that down as far as the background illuminance, so the illuminance that's actually the light that's coming in towards the monitor. So that has to do with your room itself. And then the actual coefficient of reflection here for that light, if we multiply those two things together, that is what's gonna give us our L ambient or our ambient light that's actually gonna be coming back towards us. When we view our image, we're gonna be viewing the actual output from the monitor 
plus this L ambient. As far as the things that are just related to the display itself and not related to the room properties, there's actually the minimum luminance. So how dark can the darkest pixel be? And then there's the maximum luminance. So how bright can the brightest pixel be? If you remember our video on how LCDs work, you remember that it's actually happening via a filtration so there's a backlight that's passing through a couple levels of filtration as well as that liquid crystal display inside. So we don't actually get pure black. We actually do have a minimum value here. So that's where the minimum luminance comes from. And then the maximum luminance is again a property of the display itself and has to do with how bright that backlight is as well as the light passing through those filters. L max is defined as the brightest luminance that's going to come out of the panel. Then we can define what we call the ambient ratio. So this is the ratio of the ambient luminance to the minimum luminance. The idea here is we'd like to keep the ambient light down such that the ambient light is not actually a significant contributor as you're looking at these images. The ambient ratio, we'd like to keep less than one quarter. Things that we can do to actually adjust the setup in the room, adjust the lighting, right? So we, again, don't want directed lights, especially towards the monitor. So we'd like to move the lights further away and go with more diffuse lighting sources. So that is one thing that we can do in order to, again, reduce the ambient light. We can also have a higher luminance display. Having darker darks and brighter brights are both beneficial when we want to define what we call our luminance response curve. And we'd like to have monitors which have low reflection, so we don't want the monitor to actually reflect the light. We want to calibrate the monitor directly where it's going to be used in the same lighting conditions that it's going to be used. If there's a different amount of ambient light, we could actually have a different calibration such that the monitor will be performing in the expected manner with the actual background. In order to figure out how bright to make each of the pixels, we need a function that's going to map, for instance, if we have an 8-bit grayscale value, so just from 0 to 255, and that's saying how bright is the value. At 0, it's black, and at 55, it's white. And then we need a function actually that we're going to use. This has been defined and it's called the grayscale display function or the GSDF. Or more generally, we could also call it the luminance response function. And it basically means for what difference in grayscale value, how much do we change the brightness of the monitor or the luminance of the monitor? We'd like to have changes in what's called the just noticeable difference for the human eye so that each difference in a grayscale value, we have the same difference in what's called the just noticeable difference such that if we're showing on a uniform background, we're showing a region which is slightly different, the eye can actually differentiate that from the background. We'd like that property to be nice and linear. So at each change of grayscale value, we have the same value of what we call the just noticeable difference that we can observe in the image. This actually means we need to change the luminance a little bit differently. The luminance value here that we needed to change by is actually greater than the luminance value here in order to get the same just noticeable difference as far as the grayscale values. We also want to take into account the ambient lighting. The DICOM standard is defined for ideal conditions which do not have significant ambient lighting. And so you can see here's the DICOM standard here. But if you do have significant ambient lighting, you can see that when you perform your calibration, you're actually going to want to take that into account such that your function to map the actual grayscale values to the luminance coming out of the monitor actually will take that into account. Then we have a couple more parameters. What we call prime means it's the minimum luminance from the monitor plus the ambient luminance because both of these things are always going to be contributing to what's making it to our eye. So that's the minimum from the perspective of actually what's going on in the room. And the maximum for the monitor itself, we just call it L max. So that's as bright as we can get. 
or as high of a value as we can get. And the monitors, as we talked about at the beginning just a little bit, the monitors for diagnostic monitors, you want to have a higher value of the luminance such that you can actually define that scale really well. And we talked about 350 here. Again, so 350, this is called candles per meter squared or a definition of luminance. And for mammography, we'd like to have 420 candles per meter squared. And for the other monitors that are not diagnostic monitors that you're using, you'd like to have that be at least 250 candles per meter squared. The calibration of LMAX on these diagnostic monitors can actually happen within the monitor itself. So this is one of the features for these nice diagnostic display monitors that is not typically present on a standard off-the-shelf monitor. They actually have the ability to make measurements of LMAX. A little sensor will come out here and that sensor is directly mounted against the screen. The screen goes bright right there and it can make a measurement of LMAX. Sometimes you'll see them come out in the middle like this, on the top middle or the bottom right, for instance. And those brightness controls actually allow us to have calibrated values and allow us, on when we're entering in values on the monitors that themselves, we can typically them in in absolute values, not in just a relative brightness value. That way, if things are changing over time, you can actually account for that because when we're doing this mapping function, we actually want to use the actual values, not just the percent brightness values. So just like we had L min prime, we can have L max prime, which again is just adding that ambient luminance to the maximum value. So again, that's the maximum brightness that we can have. And the luminance ratio is just the ratio of the maximum luminance divided by the minimum luminance, again, where in each case we had the ambient added to it. Another thing we want to talk about is the process under which the DICOM standard was made is actually in what's called a varied adaptation phase, where the whole background is one grayscale, and then there's a little region within that, which is a different grayscale, and then we see if we can see that. This is kind of an ideal scenario because in actual clinical work, what you have is something like this, where if you flash it up, it's actually kind of distracting because there's lots of different levels of grayscale within the image. So even if you had the same relative contrast or the same relative change in luminance from one pixel to another, it's actually typically more difficult to see that in this fixed adaptation state, especially if what you're looking for is not around the mean of the image. If the values that you're looking for are around the mean of the image, then you might perform similarly well. But if there's values that are brighter or darker, your eye isn't used to the grayscale levels in that region. So what that looks like on a plot here is just, this is the nice theoretical value that's in the DICOM standard. And in reality, when we actually don't have variable adaptation, but we have fixed adaptation, then you can see that the mean luminance of the image is right around here. And then away from that, as you go lower or you go higher in luminance, there's actually a penalty associated with the fact that your eye isn't perfectly adapted to that region of grayscale. So you actually need more contrast or more difference in luminance in order to get the same results. Then you can look at the table again. These are the values that we expect to have for the quality of the monitor in terms of those parameters. And we'd like to have that LR be in the range of 350. One other thing we wanted to talk about is on these LCD displays, they work a little bit differently than the cathode ray tubes like we talked about again in our video. And if you look at the ideal behavior of the calibration for an ideal monitor here. In the old days for the cathode ray tubes, the quality assurance actually only recommended to test 18 of these different points. There'd be 15 grayscale levels in between each test point. And the idea is that if you look at kind of a zoom in of one of these regions down in here, right near the zero point, it actually can be the case that on the OLEDs or LCDs where they're actually being individually controlled, that sometimes that might not be enough sample points. 
we might actually want to have more sample points in order to actually do a proper calibration from that TG270 report. They demonstrated a case where the vendor was actually using only 15 points also in their testing, and they were leaving this line a little bit from the DICOM standard. They could have done a little bit better if they would have actually done more sampling. And especially nowadays, there can be software where you can actually do this for all 256 points in an automated manner for the grayscale levels. The task group recommends it to do at least 52 different grayscale values instead of just the 18, which were done earlier for cathode ray tubes. Then also it's important to do some visual checks. So if you look, this is going from the dark values to the bright values. And you'd like to have a nice smooth gradient because in these patterns, we're actually asking for the value to get a little bit brighter in each of those neighboring strips here. Here it's brighter and here it's relatively darker. And if your eye can't really tell a difference and it looks nice and smooth, you don't see any differences between there, that's a sign of a good calibration. If your eye can see a difference, if you can see there's a little strip here that doesn't quite match up with the neighbors, that means that grayscale level wasn't quite calibrated well. And you could see that at different points of the grayscale level, either at the brighter points or at the darker points. As I mentioned earlier, definitely see our video on cathode ray tubes, LCDs, and OLED displays. We're gonna actually understand the basics of how these monitors work. That's really gonna help to go together with this information of how to actually do the quality assurance and the parameters that are important to look at for the monitors.